So most people are not dying from this coronavirus, right? Um, if you look at the, the other flus, many, many people died from it, like swine flu, 60 million people got it. I think about uh, 300,000 people died from it, 18,000 in the United States. So first of all, we have viruses all around us. We have about 380 trillion viruses in our body, 60 trillion bacteria in our body for about 6 trillion cells. So people are being uh, fear-mongered and taken advantage of because of the lack of understanding of the immune system. So first is that people who are compromised are people whose immune systems are already low, like older people. So whether it's the coronavirus or any virus, if someone is older, right, 60, 70, 80 years older, you should make sure that they're quarantined from infections for anything. I hope that's clear. If someone already has a compromised immune system, if they have autoimmune disorders, um, obviously you don't you don't you want to protect them from any infection. This is just basic basic common sense. But the issue is why is there so much hype and fear mongering? And if you actually unravel this, from my understanding, when you really look at it, there are political reasons. And the political reasons are there's a broader interest in making sure we all get vaccinated. Okay, that the only way to solve medical health issues is through the model of vaccinating everyone through pharmaceutical drugs. So if you look at the immune system. There are two main components. I mean, the immune system is a very complex system, which I study. I'm probably one of the leading experts in this because the immune system is complex and you have to study from an engineering systems approach. Most medical doctors really don't know how the immune system works because their medical training just teaches them pieces, right? But the bottom line is if you eat foods that are high sugar foods, right? Mm -hmm. Your body actually will create toxins that suppress the immune system. And in that case, when you get hit with different pathogens, your body will overreact. Viruses will come and go, okay? Now, if you have a, a, a entire world where people are obese, you know, in the United States, 30% obesity, where people are immunocompromised, dirty air, dirty water, dirty food, this affects our immune system. This is basic. I don't see them calling an emergency the fact that 30%, 20, 30% of the people in the United States are obese now. So, but the larger issue here is that you have big pharmaceutical companies who are actually losing money from pharmaceutical drugs. So their only way to make profitable revenue is to vaccinate everyone, vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. Their model is to have 7 billion people in the world all on vaccines. So think about it. If that means crashing the U.S. economy or crashing the world economy, let's say it would cost four or seven, five trillion dollars, but they can make 10 trillion a year, they're going to do that. And so the health policy is being run by people who absolutely are practicing fake science. They may know this, but they are essentially promoting a model that you need to vaccinate people. Only Western medicine can solve the ills of the world. Forget the fact that food is medicine. Forget the fact that you know you need to, it, it, supplementation is good and that there are many other forms of medicine, meditation, stress reduction, all these things. Their goal is a monetary, you can just follow the money. It's not even conspiracy, okay? The lawyers and lobbyists and politicians create problems, right? And they create fake problems and they come up with fake solutions. They don't ever come up with real solutions because the real solutions would mean that they have to get, let go of their own power. And they don't want to solve real problems. They want to essentially enslave people. It's no different than the old kings. You know, the king had his little territory and he took 30% or 40% of what are the worker made. Now we're taking 60, 70%. In fact, we're taking so much that we want to nationalize things and make, basically make people stupid and then basically make them robots. That's where all of this is going. It's going through utter nationalization of things. We've nationalized security, right? We watch everyone with cameras all day long. We do not teach people how to eat right. We do not take care of our environment. Mark my words, next year at this time, they will probably say everyone should be vaccinated. And if you don't get vaccinated, you, we're not going to let you, we're not going to give you a driver's license. We won't give you transport. We won't give you business licenses. We have 7 billion people. And let's say overall, you can make a thousand bucks per person per year per vaccine. That's $7 trillion per year. Okay. So if you are willing to crash the economy, maybe it'll cost the US 4 trillion, but it's like you're investing 4 trillion. And then you get a return of income of seven trillion year over year over year. So over a ten year period, you're going to make seventy trillion. Uh, that's what it's about. So the health policy is being implemented by a guy called Anthony Fauci here, who's essentially big pharma and big vaccine. He's been at it since 1986, and no one is able to call him on on it because he says he's a 
virologist and an immunologist, and he's the problem is that I actually know the science. And what he's doing is he's taking advantage of people's ignorance. Look, it's about time people started voting and fighting for people and defending people and supporting people who actually have to solve problems. You know, if you're an engineer, I'm, I'm a working class kid. I came, you know, my parents came from India with nothing. I've worked all my life. These politicians don't work. What, what do they do? What they're doing is they're working their networks. They're all incestuous, right? Whether they're left or right, they're all the same set of people. And they take advantage of working people and our labor. It's no different than taking advantage of slaves. And it's time that the slaves realize that they have choices. And that's what this is about and that they need to get educated and they need to, you know, they use fear. After 9-11 occurred in the United States, it was terrorism, 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 terrorism. And they used that to implement a police state of watching everything. And everyone said, okay, it's okay. I have cameras everywhere, right, watching me. So we gave yeah. up our freedom. Now with this, we're going to say, okay, you can inject anything into me. So every time we give away this freedom, you can never get it back. And what it does, it helps consolidate power to the Bill Gates, the Hillary Clintons, you know, those kinds of people who think they're actually very smart, they know better, and we're all basically their slaves. That's what's fundamentally taking place. So let's talk about Italy, okay? Mm -hmm. If you look at Italy, about, what, 10 years ago, did you hear about the Five Star Movement in Italy? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay. The Five Star Movement in Italy was a bottoms-up movement, an independent movement out of both parties, right? Berlusconi and the other party. Yeah. And they actually started building a lot of mass bottoms-up movement in Italy. And that was very threatening to the elites. Now, you have to also understand Italy is where the Vatican is, okay? Italy has one of the worst healthcare systems. Friends of mine who are from Italy that I've worked with at MIT, they said, you never want to end up in an Italian hospital, okay? They're horrible. They're like state-run hospitals. It's awful. So if you look at the situation in Italy, how many deaths have been there right now? 4,000. How many people have been infected? Uh, 40,000. Right. So that's in that numbers, it's about 10%. And what those 4,000 people died, what is their background? Most of them are old people. Most of them. So as you get older, your immune system gets compromised, whether it's this or any virus, okay? Um, you know, I think I, I think you can look at how many people die of the flu every year globally. Now, they're attributing this to Corona. Now, when you get the flu and your immune system is compromised, you, you're open to many viruses. I don't know if you know that. If you looked at someone who has the flu, they have many different viruses in themselves. If you wanted to solve the problem, you take the people who are older, people who are immunocompromised, fine, protect them. And that should be protected in any case. But then you take the healthy people and let them run the economy, right? And let them start boosting their immune system with vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin C, eating proper foods. You don't shut down the entire world. This is unheard of. So the entire concept of this virus kills this person is not true. It's a compromised immune system. Meaning that if you don't have the proper infrastructure within your body, your immune system will overreact, okay? And people need to wake up and realize that they need to start using their brains and their common sense because fear is how fascism comes. You know, so you have fear, fascism, and pharma. That's what we're headed towards. So think about what's going on. People are waking up and they're getting smart. They just need proper education and information. That's what, you know, my mission is. My mission is to educate people. And it's, for me, it's very interesting because my whole life has been about health. I grew up in India you know, in a small village and also in the city, uh, watching my grandmother was a traditional healer. I studied, you know, since when I was 14, I started uh, doing research at a medical school full time. And then I went in and out of MIT understanding systems. And my whole life has been dedicated to health. Separate from that, I've had a deep interest in political systems. So for me, it's very interesting because both are converging at a time when I've been a fighter, you know, on these other areas in politics but deeply, deeply contributing and interested in the immune system, et cetera. So I think it's all good. It's just people need to realize that they need to understand that their choices, what choices they do will determine their future. And it's really time for people to get out of their ways, overcome their fear and start realizing what are they gonna put in, inside themselves and who are they going to vote for and elect? That's really, it's all up to them. You know, there's more of us than them. That's what people need to realize, okay? Otherwise, we can be brainwashed.